How are y'all doing this morning? Not bad. Aiden, thank you for changing your name from Joe Mama to your real name, so I'll know who you are. <clears throat> um, all right, so today we are going to work some example problems on applying our three-phase circuit analysis relationships. Um, so let me share my screen real quick. So um, the first problem that we have here, we have a, well, actually, let me ask you guys, what kind of system is this? It's a Y delta, right? Yes, it's a Y on the source side, delta on the load side, so that would be a Y delta system. We are asked to find the line currents and the phase currents at the load. So I am going to just real quick define exactly what these are uh, graphically. So our line currents would be these guys flowing through the transmission line, IAA. IBB and ICC. And then we're going to have phase currents IAB. IBC and ICA. Like so. So to approach this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to use some of the transformation techniques that we went over uh, last Friday in order to make this circuit look like a YY system so that we can do some circuit analysis. So since the only part of our system that is delta connected in this case is our load, we will simply need to convert our delta load into a Y load. Does anybody remember how we go about doing that? Wasn't it just divide everything by three or something? That is exactly right. We simply divide the delta impedance by a factor of three because everything is balanced. So Z delta over three, which in this case uh, is fairly simple. Six plus J four. Um, from here, our single phase equivalent circuit is going to look like this. Here's BAN. We have a line impedance that we need to pay attention to. Here's A, here's N. Here's capital A, and then it looks now like we have that impedance of ZY there. And, and in this case, in our real system, the neutral conductor literally does not exist. But again, um, because we know that the voltage drop over the neutral conductor is zero and the current flowing through the neutral conductor is zero for a balanced three-phase system, even if its actual impedance is infinitely large because we have an open circuit, we can still treat it like a short circuit to use our single phase equivalent. So while we're here, I am going to point out that analyzing this circuit directly will give us our line currents. However, it will not give us our phase currents because our phase current is between terminals A and B, and that's not what we have here in our um, single phase equivalent circuit. So we'll have to do a little bit of manipulation, and uh, that's what we'll talk about shortly. So first things first, let's determine our line current. So IAA, in this case, is going to be VAN, which is 220 angle zero degrees volts on this, divided by ZW 
plus ZY. So that is going to be 6.5 plus J 4.1. And that gives me a value of 28.627 angle negative 32.242 degrees amps. RMS. And then from this guy, I can get my other line current, IBB, by simply shifting IAA by negative 120 degrees, giving me 28.627 angle, negative 152.242 degrees. I see three is twenty-eight point six two seven with an angle of negative two hundred and seventy-two point two four two degrees. Yeah, all right. So the more easy part um, it is over. Our single phase equivalent circuit allowed us to calculate our line current extremely trivial, right? Just by doing simple transformations uh, from delta to y on that load, our line current circuit analysis is very, very trivial. To determine our phase current, we're going to have to go back to our original circuit real quick and look at some relationships. So I can write a Kirchhoff's current law equation at node A. I'm just going to circle what I'm doing here. Right. So at this node, I see that a current IAA, which we know, flows in. We have a current IAB, which we do not know, flowing out. And a current ICA, which we do not know, flowing in. However, we know that ICA lags IAB by 240 degrees because this is a balanced three phase system. So I'm going to write that PCL equation. So I'm saying IAA is equal to IAB minus. I C A. I can express this as I A B times a factor of one minus one angle negative two hundred and forty degrees. And this guy right here just turns out to be the square root of three angle minus seventy degrees. So from that, our line, or excuse me, our phase current IAB is simply IAA divided by root three angle negative 30 degrees. And I get 16.528. Angle negative 2.242 degrees. And then subsequently, IBC is just that shifted by 120. So 16.528 angle negative 152. Sorry, that's not right. Uh, negative 122. 0.242 degrees. And finally, I see a is 16.528 angle negative 
242.242 degrees RMS. So, what did you guys think about the level of circuit analysis that was needed to determine those phase currents in our delta connected load? Almost trivial. Almost trivial, yeah. A little bit less trivial than um, determining those line currents. Yeah, pretty easy, yeah. Um, so a little less trivial than determining the line currents. It did require some thought and realizing that even though we had two unknown currents in our KCL equation, there was a relationship between those two uncurrents that is clearly defined because we have a balance system that made this guy fairly straightforward. So um, let's take a look at another example problem. I only have three prepared. We might get out of here a little bit early today. Uh, so what kind of system is this? Uh, delta Y. Delta Y, yeah. So delta connected source, uh, Y connected load. We are asked to find our line currents. So I'll go ahead and label those guys again. And we are also asked to find our line voltages at the load. So that's going to be this guy. This guy and this guy. So, what are we going to need to do um, to this guy to convert it into a YY system? So our source is delta connected. So we obviously need to convert our source from a delta connected source into a Y connected source. Anybody remember how we do that? So if we want BAN, we have VAB. What do we do? Let's see. Multiply by three. No, because it's a source, it's not as simple as multiplying by three. The only time we will ever multiply by three is if we wanted to convert a Y connected load into a delta connected load. So um, if you look back at your notes that we defined for doing the source transformations between a delta and a Y, all we have to do here is take our delta voltage VAB and right, multiply by one over root three, angle negative 30 degrees. And this gives us our Y voltage, um, which in this case is going to be 173. 0 0.205 with an angle of negative 30 degrees volts on this. And with just this one voltage, we have all the information that we need to determine uh, everything else. So um, let's draw our single phase equivalent circuit again.
find our line currents trivially. So we'll have IAA is equal to VAN. So that is 173.205 angle negative 30 degrees volts RMS divided by ZW plus ZY, which is going to be 7 plus J 2.3 ohms. And if I carry out that operation, I get a line current of 23.507 degrees amps RMS. And getting my other two line currents is simply shifting that, so I'm not going to bother doing that anymore. Now, the question is, how do I go about getting those line voltages, right? Anybody have any thoughts? So, Nobody's saying much anything, so let me ask you guys a quick question. Do we have enough information to calculate that phase voltage there that I've drawn in green? Yes, you have a current plus the resistance. So. Yeah, uh, that phase voltage in our single phase equivalent circuit would show up right there, right? It's just the voltage drop over ZY. So we could take that line current, multiply it by ZY, or we could do voltage division, whatever floats our boat. Um, so when we have a phase voltage for a Y connected anything, and we want to get a line voltage, what do we need to do? Well, we take that phase voltage and multiply by square root of three angle positive 30 degrees. So it's doing this transformation that we did for our source in the opposite direction. So from that, I would say that our voltage VAB is going to be our line current that we know, IAA times ZY, which again is nothing more than VAN. And then we multiply this guy by root three angle 30 degrees to convert that phase voltage into a line voltage. And if we carry out that operation, we get a line voltage of 257.508 with an angle of 0 0.246 degrees volts RMS. And from this guy, we could obviously get the line voltage VBC and the line voltage VCA simply by shifting um, by negative 120 and negative 240 degrees, respectively. Uh, real quick, what is what is the current uh, IAA? I just see 23.507 degrees. Oh, I'm sorry, 23.507, uh, let me put the angle there. I apologize about that, I totally forgot it. Uh, 23.507, negative 48.189 degrees amps RMS. I apologize. I was just a little confused when I saw that. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, it should be a complex number. Obviously, we're uh, 
We have a complex number in the numerator and a complex number in the denominator. And my best guess is that the angle, well, I know for a fact that the angle of the denominator isn't negative 30 degrees uh, because it's positive based on the, the sign on the J of it there. So yeah, it's fair to be confused when I forget to do part of the problem. <laughs> um, but after that step, uh, just using good old Ohm's law to calculate VAN, and then shifting, or excuse me, and then converting our phase voltage VAN into the line voltage VAB is simply that conversion factor of root three angle 30. So any questions, comments, concerns about this problem? All right, so I have posted two homework assignments on Moodle. Um, the first of which is due next Wednesday. It is five problems, all of which the source is Y connected, and then the load is either Y connected or delta connected, and then the very last problem has both a Y and delta connected load. And the second homework set, all the sources are delta connected, and then the loads are either Y or delta or some combination thereof. Uh, so what I'm going to do now, this is our last thing to do today. If we finish early, that's perfectly fine. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to look at homework 15, problem 5, in which there is a delta connected load and a Y connected load in parallel, um, which I have drawn here uh, on the screen. And we're looking for our line currents and the phase currents at our curve. So this one is a little bit taxing. Um, one of the main reasons that I'm actually working this homework problem out specifically is because I get problem or, or questions from students almost every time that I assign it saying, how the heck am I supposed to draw this thing? Um, so this is one of a couple of different ways to do it. Um, so this would be phase current IAB. Here's a phase current IBC. I, guess I should draw all my line currents here. A, sorry, not my, uh, my phase current ICA. Then I have my Y currents here. This is I A N, I C N, and I B N. So those are the nine figures of interest that you're asked to solve in the homework problem. I'm going to say let's solve for this guy, this guy, and this guy. Just the, the A portions because after we do that everything else is trivial. So how do you guys think we should approach this problem? Any, any thoughts? Recall, on the source side over here, we have a Y connection. And on the load side over here, we have a Y and a delta connection. So our single phase equivalent circuit method requires that we have a YY system. So what do we obviously need to do to the delta connected load? convert the delta into y. Right, all right. So I'm gonna call our original y load 
ZY1 from here on out so it doesn't get too confusing. And I'm going to say that ZY2 is simply Z delta over 3, which is going to be 12 over 3 is 4, plus J3 over 3 is 1, 4 plus J1 ohms. From this, our single phase equivalent circuit would be this guy. And I want colors. There we go. We can determine directly from our single phase equivalent circuit our line current IAA. And if we were so inclined, we could also find our phase current IAN um, in a couple of different ways from this. So let's start with our line current. What's our line current going to be? Sorry. Any thoughts? Shouldn't we just simplify it down into uh, one series connected and then solve for it? Yeah. So um, doing that, we would have BAN divided by ZW plus ZY1 times ZY2 over ZY1 plus ZY2, right? Because those two Y connected loads are in parallel, so we can just combine those impedances into a single equivalent impedance. And if we put in the numbers here, IAA comes out to be Forty one point eight seven five with an angle of four point eight nine seven degrees amps RMS. So our line current fairly straightforward. Our phase currents are arguably a little bit more difficult. So anybody have any thoughts on how we might determine that phase current IAN? So IAA is equal to IAN plus, or plus two I, or is equal to two IAN? So, I intentionally, it's not going to be two IAN because ZY1 and ZY2 are two different impedances. I have intentionally not drawn a current, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do it here. So it's flowing from node A to node N, but it is not a phase current of interest 
Uh, and the reason why I say that is because it's not the current that's flowing through the delta connected load, which is the real phase current that we're after. So I've intentionally left that one off. Now we know how much current is flowing into node A. So we could do current vision to find out how much of it splits and flows through the path that contains ZY1. Or we could find the voltage drop VAN uh, on the load side and then simply divide that voltage by the impedance. Either one of those routes is perfectly acceptable. And they both wind up giving us the exact same relationships. Just one of them is one step and the other is two steps. So using uh, the current division route, I can say that I A N is I A A times oops one over Z Y one divided by one over Z Y one plus one over Z Y two. Right. Uh, so it doesn't matter that that current is flowing through that impedance ZW. It's a known current that goes into that impedance and then out of it and entering into that node. So that's why we can use current division without having to worry about anything in particular there. Um, so using this method, uh, the current IAN is 13.958 angle 4.897 degrees. Amps. RMS. Sorry, I'm just looking at that because the phase angle of our line current and the phase angle of that phase current uh, are, are the same there, um, which seems maybe questionable, but I don't, I don't see any error that I've made in doing any of the calculations. Since the two Y impedances, they're uh, like proportional, like uh, ZY1 is twice as much as ZY2, then you would get the same result just by dividing by three. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so the, so the ratios are the same, so that's why it works that way. Okay, I got you. All right, so, so that's, n that's not something to indicate a mistake. That's just a... Uh, coincidence based on the ratio of impedance here. Okay, I, so I just, I saw that the, uh, the phase angles were the same and I was like, did I screw something up? Because that's something that you would not necessarily expect given that if we look at the original diagram, we see that that line current IAA is splitting off through multiple paths. Um, but just because the ratio of the impedances works out, it is what it is, so. That's okay. All right. So we have our line currents and we have our phase currents through our Y connected load. Now we need to revisit our original diagram to figure out what our phase currents through our delta connected load are. And we're gonna approach this in a very similar way to what we did with that very first example. We're gonna write a Kirchhoff's current law equation at node A. So we can see that we have our line current IAA flowing in. We have a phase current IAB flowing out, which we do not know. A phase current IAN flowing out, which we do know. And a phase current ICA flowing in, which we don't know. But there is a relationship between IAB and ICA. 
So writing our Kirchhoff's current law equation, we are going to have IAA minus IAN is equal to IAB minus ACA. Um, let me just make sure I got all my my signs correct. So IA would be equal to IAB plus IAN minus ICA when I move IAN to the other side. Yep, all right. So I now have it as currents I know on the left-hand side, currents I don't know. Uh, on the right-hand side, I can manipulate this guy to be IAB times one angle zero degrees minus one angle negative 240 degrees, which we know to be root three angle minus 30 degrees. And so IAB is IAA minus IAN over root three angle negative 30 degrees. And from that, I get 16.118 with an angle of positive 34.89 sorry, seven degrees amps RMS. And now we have enough information to get all six of our phase currents. So this one was a little bit tricky, um, but honestly, doing the single phase equivalent circuit method gave us a lot of information that we were able to use. And then we could effectively resort back to the techniques we utilized in a much simpler problem uh, to figure out the last little bit of information. This is literally as hard as I can make it for a balanced three phase circuit analysis problem. Like on the exam, this would be considered too difficult and time consuming in my opinion. So, um, all right, so we're finishing up, uh, gosh, let's see, about 30 minutes early. That's okay. Um, on Monday. Um, so let's talk about class on Monday real quick. Uh, right now, uh, the interstate is effectively closed from Monroe all the way to Shreveport. And unfortunately, I live smack dab in the middle uh, in Minden. So unless uh, there is considerable ice meltage uh, between now and Monday, I am not driving uh, anywhere. So I'm going to say tentatively that class on Monday will be held virtually over Zoom again, so I don't uh, die trying to drive the 40 miles or whatever from my house to campus. Um, I will send out an email on Sunday evening if I change those plans, but I, my best guess is the four-ish inches of ice on all the roads and stuff like that aren't going to be able to go, the, go away uh, by Monday, so I would assume that class is going to be virtual, uh, you know, on Monday and then resume to be a uh, normal in-person meeting on the following Wednesday. Um, so before class on Monday, if you could, just take a look at those, uh, uh, those two homework assignments that I've posted. And if you have any questions or anything like that, I'd be happy to answer them um, on Monday when we uh, resume classes and all that jazz, we're going to get into the power analysis for these three phase circuits. Um, so unless anybody has anything else they want to talk about today, uh, we're finished and I'll see you guys uh, virtually on Monday.